Hey guys, what's going on? Tua Cruz here with a race breakdown video. For those of you interested about cycling and racing in Japan, you've come to the right channel. Today I'm actually trying out a new style video. I've got my new power meter data overlaid with my new GoPro and it's my first road race in two years. So here we go, let's get into this. So this race is called the Hirata Criterium. It's a monthly race held in the Tokai region, the central region near Nagoya, Japan, where I live. And they have a whole point series, so every month you can enter this race. And it only costs about 1,000 yen to enter, which is really cheap, that's only 10 bucks. You can see we're going really slow right now, and that's because the start is neutral. We go through the first two corners with the pace car, everyone's together, and then they blow the whistle and then we begin. So this is pretty exciting for me to see all this data here. I've raced for over 10 years and I really never used a power meter up until recently. I just got one and I've got all the data here, the heart rate, the power, and the speed so you can see everything that we're doing. Speeds in kilometers because we use that here in Japan. And we're just about to get started here pretty soon. Um, again, this is my first time making one of these videos so I'm going to do my best to give some good commentary. The race is pretty long, or not really that long, but about 40 minutes. We'll see if I can talk straight through the whole thing, but I'll at least get the beginning, some important parts, and the finished part on my thoughts and everything. So if you're interested, go ahead and watch the race. And there we go, we just had the whistle, so here we get, we're beginning with the start, and not too crazy you can see, got about 700 watts for the start sprint, but nothing too insane here. I'm originally from the US in the Midwest, which is known for its pretty fast crit racing, so coming from that, the crit racing here isn't anything too special, but keep in mind this isn't really exactly a super high level race. This is more of a training local series kind of race. There are some really fast people that come here, there are some pro riders that come, but there's really nothing on the line. There's no prizes, there's no money really or anything in this but it's just a nice fun time for everyone to come out you don't have to join the national cycling body to enter this race which is one of the biggest reasons why i'm able to do this because other races you have to be part of a sanctioned team to go to the races so this is one where i can go enjoy myself you'll notice the person in front of me actually has a strange white big helmet and those are the people who are training usually for the karen here they wear that strange helmet so that's one of the unique things about this race is, is that it mixes some road riders and the Kirin riders together. This course is a uh, rectangle course, so two long straights and four corner crit. Pretty basic, but the two long straights are really, really long. So today is really windy, really cold, and we've got a strong headwind on the direction we just came. And then the direction we're about to go right now is a strong tailwind. Pretty exciting day for me today to get out the race wheels. I haven't used these race wheels in over two years. And I just started racing cyclocross again last year. I made some videos on the channel about that if you're interested in cyclocross races here in Japan. So I'm in some decent shape right now. I just had a nice little cyclocross racing season. And today I wasn't really sure how I was gonna do. I haven't been training too much recently because I just went on a two week long trip to Thailand with my wife. Didn't really have any rental bikes while we were there. But, and also when I got back, I had a small case of uh, food poisoning, so things were really rough. I wasn't sure how I was going to do today, so I decided for the first part of the race, I was going to take it easy, just sort of sit in, see how I was feeling, and if I felt better, I'd try and move up. And I'm feeling really comfortable in this long straight here. You can see I'm getting out of the draft, I'm getting out of the draft, I'm trying to move up a few spots. And this is the spectator area right here, the parking lot area, so every lap we come through here, the finish line is pretty close. And that's it, that's one full lap. Nothing too long, I think it's about two kilometers. And we got a hard break here. The people in the Japanese races here usually take the corners pretty safely, which is a nice change of pace compared to the crazy cornering that I'm used to in the crit racing in the US. But this part right here is a pretty tough acceleration. We go straight into the headwind and this is where it really strings out. So you definitely want to try and move up as much as you can before getting into this point to save some energy. Again, pushing about 600, 700 watts in this sprint here, but I see it's blocking up. It's coming back together up front, so. You 
you'll notice some people here have some similar jerseys, so there are some people racing on the same team here, but I really don't notice that much of a sense of team strategy in the races here. Most people sort of just race individually, and there's really no strong team strategy, which is both good and bad because if you're racing individually like me, you kind of expect teams to behave in a certain way so that you can read them, but the people here don't really do that. They don't really race as a team, for example, counter-attacking, and everyone just sort of races for themselves. They might do a little lead out at the end for the sprint, but that's about it, so it's really hard to read any team tactics and get away in this race. Most of the teams here are pretty local to the Tokai area, Nagoya region, Aichi Prefecture, Gifu Prefecture, Mie Prefecture, but there are a couple of people who come from further away. Feeling pretty comfortable right now, heart rate is pretty low for me right now in the cyclocross races I usually average about 180 for the full hour long race and today's race is only about 40 minutes so definitely getting a little bit of a break here 150 beats per minute for me and there we go big sprint 1100 watts pretty happy seeing these high sprint numbers that's a good sign for me that my training is going pretty well and in today's race I actually consistently hit those numbers quite a few times Again, feeling really comfortable in this section, able to move up pretty comfortably, saving some energy. And I want to move up here, get up closer to the front so I don't have to hit that one acceleration out of the turn there in a bad position, save some energy there. There's my friend Hiroki on the right we just passed. like other people here trying to get the same strategy as me move up as quickly as you can in this corner before the hard acceleration and uh, those are my loud squeaky brakes I'm that guy who didn't adjust his brakes or put on the carbon pad so yeah sorry guys looks like we got a small little break ahead about two guys but really nothing to worry about with today's wind and today's field Over a thousand watts again here in this sprint. This is the tough one. And there, oh, that guy letting open the gap. That's a big no no. So I'm pretty upset with him, but I don't want to waste any energy trying to get it by myself. So just decide to sit on the wheel, let him close the gap, let him do that. Even though I'm on this wheel, I'm still pushing some heavy watts here, about 400, 300. And the other guy got sick of closing the last little bit of gap, so he went ahead and did the rest for him. But uh, I'm not going to help him out. I'm just going to sit on this guy, let him finish the rest of the work. So that's a big no-no in a crit race. You don't open any gaps like that. But again, bad on me for being far behind to the position where I was stuck in that position. So. Definitely need to get moving up further ahead in this field. Things are chilling out a little bit right now. About to approach the next corner. Looks like we caught that group of two that was ahead. position is the last lap about 167 now so things are heating up a little bit over 1100 again but not really stretching out grouping up a little bit here
my buddy Hiroki right in front of me. So one of my main training buddies here in Japan. And he also has one of the coolest jerseys here in Japan. If you've you've probably seen some pictures in some other videos. Here we go. Pace is cooking up before the next corner. Going through the start finish area. Got to make sure that you're going fast in front of the spectators, the few spectators that are here. Uh, this course is actually alongside a river path. That's pretty much where most races are in Japan, along some sort of river path. So you'll see on the right side, there's some cars going by. And then straight ahead here, we're right next to the river. Very hard to find good facilities for racing in Japan or facilities with parking and stuff. It's just a really small country. And uh, pretty bad way for me to take this corner right here. I let this gap open a bit. Hit over a thousand watts again, but tried to close it as quick as I could. Things are definitely stretching out a little bit this time, but pretty hard with the headwind to really push the pace too hard here. For the front people anyway. A lot easier for the people in the back drafting. Still don't think I've made my way to the top 10 in this race yet, but that's alright. I'm biding my time making sure I'm comfortable. These people are really smart. They got their leg warmers on. Today was kind of borderline for me. It was either leg warmers or no leg warmers, but it was pretty cold and I was regretting it most of the race even though I thought it would get hot enough to the point where I wouldn't really feel it but the speed in road racing is way different than cyclocross so you can get away with it a lot easier in cyclocross racing where you're not going at this highest speed and today the wind was just really brutal so it's really suffering in the cold getting a little harder to breathe and shivering a little bit especially in these easier moments where we're not really going that hard here we go, I looks like I made my way close to the top 10, finally starting to see the front. So if you're a good crit racer, usually by being in the front you can save more energy than by being in the back. And you don't miss out on any opportunities, you don't get gapped as easily. Here we go, over 1,100 watts again, so pretty consistently every lap hitting over 1,000 watts. That was pretty exciting to see this data afterwards. And no real peak in the heart rate or anything yet, still averaging mid 170s, low 170s, which is pretty comfortable for me in a race, in comparison to the all out of cyclocross racing. Pretty much every lap in this section I tend to stick to the left side, give myself some opportunity to move up. I don't like being in the center. And I also don't like being on the right side here, on this straight. And they're slowing up a little bit, so I'm taking this chance to move up to the front so I can get some good positioning going into this corner. up the road again not a problem on this course in today's weather it's not going to be any solo break here so they sit up a little bit I decided to go up to the front put in a little sort of fake attack use the momentum but this wind was hitting me really hard you can see I'm still pushing some decent water here 500 watts trying to push it as hard as I can without blowing up close the gap to this guy look behind see but pretty much everyone's with me. So I decided to ease up a little bit. Still pushing pretty decent 400 watts, but don't want to burn myself up with everyone on my wheel. That's also crit, crit 101 racing, no-no. Steadily closing the gap for this guy. Again, everyone's just gonna suffer in this headwind. There's my buddy, Hachi-san from Pucho Coffee Cycling Team. Cool guy at all the races. And Kodama-san also going by. So people 
people pushing through on the rotation up here, working together. And I don't want to let too many people move up, so pushing it back up here, trying not to lose too many spots. You can see my heart rate's starting to go up to the higher 170s because the, the little effort I just put in there, 179. want to cool things down a little bit, let myself recover, keep a good position. Oh, just briefly hit over a thousand for a half second there. So again, like I mentioned, the racing care isn't anything too aggressive, too crazy. We get plenty of rest opportunities here, but compared to the racing back home where it's just non-stop, non-stop attacks, this is a nice way to welcome myself back into the racing scene here. So able to pretty comfortably sit in in the pack here, even after a small little effort, not feeling too stressed or anything right now, feeling pretty comfortable about halfway through the race right now, almost halfway through the race right now, and starting to feel comfortable enough to put in maybe a few more efforts. spectator areas you should try looking for my wife she helped film the video for today so if you didn't check out our race day vlog which is the footage from outside the race itself from going to the facility seeing everything around there and seeing some of our friends uh, make sure to check out that video as well Tung's helping out with the filming while I'm racing here right now over 1,000 again Really consistent efforts here. And again, this guy let this gap open. Pretty upset. I'm gonna let him close it. I'm wondering if this is the same guy as last time. I can't see his number, so I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it was the same team. And it looks like those guys don't like that gap, so they're gonna go close it for this guy. Again, I'm not gonna do the work for him. I want to let him suffer, but at the same time, I don't want to lose that opportunity. But thankfully, those other people did the jump. Other big lesson in crit racing is don't do the work if someone else is going to do it for you. So a lot of crit racing is playing the waiting game to see who's going to move. And usually who moves first is the person who wastes their energy a bit more. So the way I'm racing today, I don't really like it looking back here in this race. I usually try to be a lot more aggressive and again today was just sort of testing the water, seeing how I'm doing and hopefully as I get more fitness I'll be able to race more aggressively and do a better, more exciting race breakdown the next time I do this video for you guys. But yeah, if you like these kinds of videos make sure to like, give it a comment. If you'd like to see any other types of data or any other types of commentary in here, let me know. up here slowly moving back into the field again but heart rates going down so getting some good recovery in but I don't like drifting this far back into the field Lining up here, just gonna try and move up on the left side here, not using too much energy. Picked up a few spots, but starting to widen, spreading out a little bit here, so hard to move up. Oh, there we go. Pace is easing up, so let's take this opportunity. 
push up a little bit more. Again, this is the tailwind section, so even though I'm out in the open, I'm not losing too much energy. And my loud brakes again. again. This time it looks like it's a bit more strung out. But it doesn't last too long with this wind. yet today so that's a good sign not blowing up sitting up again so taking the opportunity moving up on the left looks like there's a small little gap of some people up the front but again not a problem right now not a threat went off the course there. I think he had some small mechanical issue. Twelve hundred watts again. Another thing you'll notice watching this race is the significant number of rim brakes here compared to disc. So in Japan, rim brakes are still dominant. I think it's about 80% people on rim brakes here, especially in the races. All the racers are still on rim brakes, and that's partly because the Japanese Race Federation doesn't allow disc race or disc bikes in a lot of the races. And last year, or the end of last year, going into this year, they changed the rules to match the UCI rules 
but not for all the races. So there's still a few races in Japan that don't allow disc brakes, and because of that reason, there's still a lot of people who haven't switched over from their rim brakes. I'm actually racing on an aluminum rim brake bike right now, and I'm actually racing with my hard case training wheel on the back, just because my, uh, my race wheels, the rear one with the cassette, dug into the hub and I wasn't able to switch the cassette, so not able to use that race wheel anymore, unfortunately. Might have to swap out the hub. But I've got my race wheel in the front for the slight aero advantage. Twelve hundred watts. Pretty sure this guy in front of me is a high schooler, really fast guy. There we go. Nice little opportunity. Moving up on the path. Moving up on the left. Closing this gap. Using my momentum. When people sit up in front and you've got some nice you got a nice chance, just use the momentum. You're better off than just accelerate braking and accelerating after. So I don't mind being in the wind a little bit then. few laps I've been not in really great position I've been pretty far in the back so trying to move up a little bit more here nice thing about disc brakes is you won't have these annoying sounds like that are coming from my bike dropping, not much power output right now, low speed. We've got about 10 minutes left in the race. I think this is the last little break.
in the top 10 position. didn't look back pretty dangerous move and I don't know what he's doing he's just sort of rolling off the front right there but I'm gonna just leave things where they are don't want to waste any more energy just sort of spinning through on the side letting people roll through let that guy suffer off alone not worth trying to close that gap on my own right now Rates in the 180s right now. Try not to fall too far back. Hold my spot. Always hard to do after you do a little effort, even though that one was super short. Just as people roll through, you don't want to lose too much spot there and get too comfortable end up right in the back again. to go so definitely want to try and maintain a position near the front don't want to waste any unnecessary energy by now pretty much realizing it's gonna come down to a sprint so I think most people are thinking the same thing they're not really pushing for a breakaway anymore try and race smart save the energy for the sprint so you get some recovery but then the sprints are pretty hard so you definitely have to be able to recover quickly or you're just gonna fly off the back if you're not used to those accelerations moving up on the right this time so I've been moving up mostly on the left in today's race so this is a bit of a change of pace here following this guy's wheel free ride to the front but I just expected him to sort of pull off here so that's what I did just pulled off to the left go through in a rotation he's gone off the front but again not threatening I don't want to waste too much energy here because I know the sprint is coming soon in a few laps so didn't really think it was worth going with that move looks like 
like a few people trying to bridge the gap. So I was waiting just for this moment. Just gonna hop back on. Get on my buddy Hiroki's wheel here. Heart rate starting to pick up. We're back in 180 range. 1000 watt sprints again. to go. Getting closer to the end here. pretty good. You can really hear the wind here in the GoPro camera. I think at this point I was finally a bit numb to the cold, finally warmed up, focused on the final sprint. Here we go again, sort of cooling down and pack surging, people are coming from behind, so yeah, this is one of the things I don't like about the racing here is there's really, the teams don't really do that much of a hard effort here with counter-attacking, everyone just sort of saving up for the sprint or any lead outs or anything like that. So hopefully once I get a bit more confident and I'll try being more aggressive in these types of situations rather than just sort of sitting around and waiting for the sprint. Unfortunately, racing smart is racing a bit is a bit boring. Decided to move up a little bit on the inside here. Way easier to do here, save some energy. I'm feeling pretty confident on my cornering here on the inside. Not a problem, holding the line. Oh, over 1300 watts that time. Moving up on the left, picking up spots where I can. Trying not to burn too much power.
trying to stick as close as I can to the wheel going through that corner because if you hold any sort of gap there, you're going to waste a lot more energy. But then of course the guy in front of me lets open the gap again. So really unlucky today with the people whose wheels I've been following. Fortunately the group ahead decided to slow down so we were able to close the gap pretty easily but that could have been a dangerous situation there if people were pushing hard. not really in a great situation, forced to push 300-400 watts out in the wind on the left side here. So I figured I'd just sort of just slowly push my way up front, not push anything too insane, but try and pick up a few spots since I'm stuck out in the wind anyway. green guy who thwarted my attack earlier. So it's been great having the power meter, great having the heart rate meter. Just so I can see this data while I'm racing, I know exactly what my limits are. I've seen my data from my previous cyclocross races with the heart rate. So I know what heart rate I can maintain and I've been doing a lot of Zwift lately with my power meter so I know what sort of power zones I can maintain, what my sprint output is. Today was really exciting though because I, I don't really know my high sprint wattage because it's really hard to do on my spin bike and so that was really exciting to see that data at the end of today's race and watching the video right now. I wasn't expecting to perform that well on the high sprint range on the repeats there. But yeah, going through the race, looking at my computer, seeing my heart rate, seeing what wattage I've been pushing, I'm feeling pretty comfortable, I'm feeling pretty confident for the finish. Looks like we got a little gap here going through, I'm just going to sort of rotate through, but then this guy decides to go, so I'm just going to rotate through again, not worth closing down the gap with just one lap to go, let other people do the work, <laughs> trying to save myself for the sprint. So there goes a few people, here's the bell, one to go. Yeah, everyone's just going to come through. These guys aren't getting away. So we're going to try and sit in as long as I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So about almost top ten position going through this corner. On this guy's wheel. Feeling comfortable. Heart rate's pushing up 185. We know we're reaching the peak of the race. So no problem sticking on these guys' wheels. Hoping things are going to push through, but... We're easing up again, so here's going to come the surging. I don't want to be stuck in the middle, so I decided to get over to the side, left side. And things aren't looking good right now. We've got some surging on the right, and I'm sort of boxed in here. So getting a little bit nervous right now. This isn't looking good for the sprint. Wasn't expecting the pace to drop down this much. Fortunately, here we go. People are pushing over to the right side. We've got a nice little gap open up, so I'm out of danger territory. There goes Kodama-san with his attack right there. Things are stretching out a little bit again. Going into the next corner. Good position. Sort of stuck on the inside, but that's okay. We're comfortable with that. I was going to go on the right side there, but some other people were going through. Here we go, top 10 position, going through the last corner, hitting over 1100 watts here. So some people can't hold the pace, they're just pulling back. I'm feeling alright, I'm on this guy's wheel. And yeah, 
yeah, just sort of hesitating. I should have went there. I've got the power. I'm just sort of reserving as much as I can to the last minute. I'm feeling pretty comfortable here. I've got the power. We're pushing up here 600 watts. And these guys sort of bumping elbows. I wasn't feeling really comfortable. Then I started to get passed on the left. And just now I started to feel boxed in. These guys bumping shoulders again, almost looking like a crash. I just lost all confidence and decided to sit up. And yeah, unfortunately, still finished with the top 20 position. I think I was about 16th place or so, but you notice in the sprint, I didn't actually sprint. So that's pretty good considering I just need to work on my positioning and yeah, work on my confidence. And there's a lot of things I can improve on here. I think I just played it way too safe. I wasn't as aggressive as I normally am in a race, and those are some things I'm hoping to improve in the next time. Be more aggressive, be more confident going into the sprint, and I'll pop up some more information here from my ride. If you want to go check it out on Strava, go ahead. And this was a long time for me to talk continuously, but if you like these kinds of videos, again, give it a like, give it a comment, and we'll see you guys next time here in Tuo Cruz. As always, thanks for watching, guys.